Hey guys, let's talk about books. I am stuck here on the floor. I don't know if you can see, I've got my comfy cushion behind me because I am having a pain day. That's the perks of disability. Do not recommend. <laughs> but anyway, we're working with what we've got and what we've got is books. So let's talk about some books that I read. As an aside, if you've been missing the vlogs, so have I. This is, this is the reason that we haven't been doing vlogs. And also the sub stack, which just kind of quietly died. I just can't. Also, I have to have my phone because I just can't remember things. Look at this phone, by the way. Look at this cover. It's just massively disintegrated there on the edge. It's, it's a fabric cover. It's a Google phone. And um, the fabric's just worn away there. And also it's wearing away here where my cat likes to chew it. Thank goodness for Notion that remembers everything. Let's start with The Valkyrie by Kate Hartfield. Now I'm going to read the blurb just so you've got an idea of what is happening. Uh, the Valkyrie came out this year, 2023. Uh, the blurb says, Brynhild is a Valkyrie, shield maiden of the Allfather, chooser of the slain, but now she too has fallen, flightless in exile. Gudrun is a princess of Burgundy, a daughter of the Rhine, a prize for an invading king, a king whose brother Attila has other plans, and a dragon to call upon. And in the songs to be sung there is another hero, Sigurd, a warrior with a sword sharper than the new moon. As the legends tell, some are destined to be lovers, some fated as enemies, but here on Midgard, legends can be lies. For not all heroes are heroic, nor all monsters monstrous. And a shield maiden that may yet find, and a shield maiden may yet find that love is the greatest weapon of all. Ah, oh, feels, etc. Um, this is a retelling of a, of Norse and Germanic myths. It is female centered. It is the point of view of the two female characters, Brynhild and Gudrun, telling their story to each other in retrospect. And as it says in the, oh, I have to hurry. I'm running out of battery. As it says in the blurb there, um, Brynhild has been exiled onto Midgard. She has to work to find her place in the world as a human and not a Valkyrie. Uh, Gudrun is a princess and she has to find a way to... She can't lead her people because she's a woman, but she can find a way to best serve her people while also being who she wants to be ultimately. I enjoyed it. Uh, Kate Hartfield wrote the embroidered book, which I enjoyed last year, and I have already pre-ordered her next one, which actually I've discovered is a reissue of a previously published book. So I guess technically this is her third. And she's written some Assassin's Creed books too. Anyway, recommend if you like Norse mythology, Germanic mythology, medieval Europe, uh, girls kicking ass and taking names. I look at that cover actually in that light. We love it. Next was a buddy read that I did with Kelly from Curatorially Yours. I cannot say that word, Kelly. Uh, and that was the book of Marjorie Kemp by Marjorie Kemp, of which I have two copies because I'm that sort of nerd. Uh, I've had the Penguin Classics edition for years. And then uh, Kelly was reading the Oxford Wells Classics edition and I found it for an absolute steal. So I got it too. Um, I prefer the Oxford World Classics covers. They look, the spines are nicer, the covers are nicer, and, and the white. I can't go past the white cover. Marjorie's book was published in 1438, so it's it's been some time. It is an autobiography. She had dictated it about her spiritual experiences, and it's something that she dictated because she couldn't read or write. And it's made up of two books, uh, the main book which has about 100 chapters or 80 chapters and then a secondary book that she's added later basically it tells the story of how she found god and came to her spiritual life and the struggles that she had coming to her spiritual life pilgrimages that she went on it's actually fascinating to read what it was actually like to go on pilgrimage as a woman alone. Lots of people abandoned her because she's really hard work. <laughs> she, she is afflicted by tears all the time when she thinks about Jesus and the passion. 
and so she's crying and wailing a lot people find her really hard work and actually a friend of mine said to me that in 2023 marjorie would have her own reality tv show and i think that's spot on uh so there's that she um she goes into visions about uh, Jesus and Mary and the saints and finds comfort in other spiritual women that she meets and reads about, like Julian of Norwich, whose book I have over there on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> Must read one day. So yeah, I found it a struggle to read, but I'm glad to have read it. It is one of those books that we only have today because it was just living in the attic of an of an ancient family house and a person who stumbled across it knew what they were stumbling across the call number is uh contentious i've placed this copy which actually has the number on it i have put that in um 920.72 which is biography of women but it could also go and a 942.03, which is biography and history of English people. Or it could go under 248.209, which is religious biography, because even though she's not a saint, it is a biography of her spiritual experiences. So because I have multiple copies, I could shelve it in multiple places, right? <laughs> not that it matters, just if you are interested in where things sit in the Dewey Decimal, by the way, and my sister's Dewey Decimal, and I have a series going through my Dewey Decimal shelves. So if you're interested in that, that's where they sit. That's the conclusion that I came to in significant consultation with ChatGPT. That actually that number 248.2092, that's where it officially sits in the uh, 23rd version of the melville decimal system that's up to you you put your books wherever you want you probably don't even shelve them in the dewey decimal system because you're a normal person <laughs> let's move on speaking of kelly from a curatorially yours which i pronounced properly that time uh she bought me this off my amazon wish list which was lovely this is the mercies by kieran millwood hargrave this was published in 2022 oh there's a bookmark in there that's the bookmark that's in there. Uh, this is published in 2020. It was on my Amazon wish list because it's historical fiction and the cover is pretty. Look at that. Shiny. And so, anyway, yeah, Kelly sent that my way. So I read it straight away and it was excellent. I will read you the blurb on this one. On Christmas Eve 1617, the sea around the remote Norwegian island of Vardo is thrown into a reckless storm as Marin Magnus Datta watches 40 fishermen, including her father and brother, are lost to the waves. The menfolk wiped out in an instant. Vardo is now a place of women. Eighteen months later, a sinister figure arrives, summoned from Scotland to, to take control of a place at the edge of the civilised world. Absalom Cornet knows what he needs to do to bring the women of Vardo to heal. With him travels his young wife Ursa. In Vardo and in Marin, Ursa finds something she's never seen before, independent women. But Absalom sees only a place flooded with a terrible evil, one that he must root out at all costs. Inspired by the real events of the Vardo storm and the 1621 witch trials, The Mercies is a story about how suspicion can twist its way through a community and a love that may prove as dangerous as it is powerful. Uh, does what it says on the tin, basically. It's inspired by real events in which all the men in, on an island were killed and then witch hunts came along. Uh, but in between, the, the story is built up to explain how... Um, suspicion and bitching in a community led to witchcraft accusations in some places <sighs> the cause of witch trials is varied and disputed and this book makes a good case for just the the zealousness of a particular person encouraging witchcraft as the solution to the problems and then encouraging 
witchcraft accusations to solve a problem that really wasn't there. It was just bitching and infighting in a community, which always happens. The story is told from the two points of views of Marin and Ursa, um, how they come to meet when Ursa is brought to the island, the impact of bringing an outsider woman onto the island and what happens in their friendship. I really enjoyed it. It was thrilling. It was a page turner. Not that anything thrilling in the genre of thriller happened. It's just, I, I struggled to put it down to go to sleep. And I think that's the best endorsement of a book ever. So thank you, Kelly. And I did really enjoy it and I recommend it to you guys too. All right, if you watched my recent haul video, which will be on a card and a link, I bought Bernadette Banner's Make, Sew and Mend Traditional Techniques to Sustainably Maintain and Refashion Your Clothes. Call number on this is 646.6, .6, which is under the category of Technology and Application of Knowledge, then Home and Family Management, then sewing, clothing, management of personal and family life, and then finally, garment care, which this is. Now, it is just a reference book. Uh, it's got, what have we got? Things like how to insert lace, how to do buttonholes, all hand sewing, not machine sewing. But she does have instructions for machine sewing too. Uh, so it's basically it's just a reference book, but I read it cover to cover. I learned things. I'm inspired to hand sew something because me and the sewing machine, we just do not get along. I hate it with a passion. And even though hand sewing will take a thousand years, I think that it would be a more pleasant process. Highly enjoyed. This was published in 2022. It's going to be handy to have to reference when I want to do things like hem a pair of pants, which is the point of it to, um, well, I don't think I'll ever darn socks, but to patch something to let a garment out or take a garment in that sort of vibes. This is your book. I used all my action points today having a shower. But that's okay. We've got one, one book to go. <laughs> and it is a comfort read for me, a five star read for me. Uh, I can't even tell you how many times I've reread this book read for me. It's The Curse of Talion by Lois McMaster Bujold. This was published in 2001. Let, and let me read you the blurb. A man broken in body and spirit, Kazarul returns to the noble household he once served as page and is named secretary tutor to the beautiful, strong-willed sister of the impetuous boy who is next in line to rule. It is an assignment Kazarul dreads, for it must ultimately lead him to the place he most fears, the royal court of Cardagos, where powerful enemies who once placed him in chains now occupy lofty positions. But it is more than the traitorous intrigues of villains that threaten Kazarul and the royas cell here, for a sinister curse hangs like a sword over the entire blighted house of Chalion. And only by employing the darkest, most forbidden of magics can Kazarul hope to protect his royal charge, an act that will mark him as a tool of the miraculous and trap him in a lethal maze of demonic paradox. That's quite spoilery. I guess bl blurbs can be really spoilery, can't they? So the story starts out with Kazarul having been rescued from slavery and he's making his way back on foot to the um, the town of Valenda, where he served the Provencar as a page many years ago. Kazarul's in his 30s now. Uh, and he's he spent some time in a hospital recovering physically and mentally-ish from the trauma of slavery, being a, um, a, a galley slave. Because the Provencar of the household recognises him, he's given his position to tutor her granddaughter. And it turns out, Everything in the blurb happens, but this book is significantly about religion, which is why I really like it. I love religion in my fantasy, and this one builds a world of five gods. In fact, the, the series name is called The World of the Five Gods. This one investigates the way that the gods can only interfere in the world through and with the permission of humans. So Kazarul serves as a vessel 
for one of the gods. More than one of the gods, which pro provides an interesting twist. Kazuo has to balance the desires of both these gods with his own desires as a human who is finding a reason to live and a reason to die. And I love it. it there's a romance in there, of course, because that's what Lois McMaster Bichold writes. She's mainly known for her Vorkosik and Saga books, which I read the first one a couple of months ago. I'll link that review. Did not enjoy, but it did also have a romance in it. I love the way that she writes. It's really just mm, like delicious yogurt. It's, I love it. And if you're in the mood for fantasy and religion and romance, highly recommend Curse of Charlie. Thank you for sticking with me with this haphazard and low energy video. It is what it is. And if I don't film it now, I will forget <laughs> what I read and my thoughts about it. You can get in contact with me in the comments, on Mastodon, on threads, on Instagram. I put my Twitter account on private because <sighs> email me, you can subscribe, you can just come back next time. Any of those things would be awesome. If you've read any of these, let me know. Or if they've sparked like, oh, Elizabeth might like this please let me know because like just spending an hour poking about the internet, sticking things on my wish list, It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.